to a 2019 data from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, billionaire space tinker and Twitter raconteur Elon Musk announced recently that SpaceX will start making rocket fuel out of carbon dioxide, CO2, a colorless gas that accounts for the majority of Earth's greenhouse gas emissions. So, in today's video, we are going to discuss Elon Musk just revealed insane plan to use CO2 as rocket fuel. With that said, let's get straight into the video. Given that Mars's atmosphere is 95% carbon dioxide, Musk is most likely working on this project to prepare for the long journey back to Earth. However, if we can utilize or blast out part of the planet's surplus CO2, the process might be beneficial to Earth. This is Twitter material that has been imported. You might be able to find the same information in a different format or additional information on their website. The notion has some precedence, since Air Company, a New York firm, is already in the business of transforming Earth's CO2 into consumable products in a carbon-neutral process. The firm was approached by popular mechanics to discover more about how it operates. According to Stafford Sheehan, co-founder and chief technical officer of Air Company, both RP-1, a rocket fuel blend, and methane in rocket fuel are currently derived from fossil fuels on Earth. Instead, we use CO2 from the atmosphere to create those hydrocarbons. Currently, our CO2 supply is biogenic since it was caught as a byproduct of commercial alcohol plants, but we may obtain CO2 from any source, including direct air capture. Alright guys, if you're really enjoying this video, then it's the right time to subscribe to your most favorite channel right now. Alright, let's get back into the video. Once you've found a supply of carbon dioxide, the key is to electrify it so that its molecules can rebond. CO2 cannot be utilized as a fuel because it is at the bottom of the energy ladder, says Di Jia Lu, a senior scientist at Argonne National Laboratory in Lamont, Illinois. However, by mixing the carbon atoms and CO2 with the hydrogen atoms in water, CO2 may be transformed into hydrocarbons such as ethanol or kerosene by electrocatalysis or catalysis with water. This is a simple procedure in space according to Liu, because solar energy is easy to generate due to the abundant, generally unobstructed sunshine. Electricity, on the other hand, is a considerably more controversial subject on Earth. Today, we see this play out in conversations over electric cars. But here's a question, are you really doing much good for the environment if you recharge using electricity supplied by coal-burning power plants? Let us know what you think in the comments box below. Now it's not feasible to simply move fossil fuels to a different part of the energy food chain. For this reason, the air company exclusively employs renewable energy. In an electrolyzer, we split water into hydrogen and oxygen gases using renewable power, Sheehan explains. An air company's innovative reactor system, which comprises our proprietary catalyst, the hydrogen gas and collected CO2 are blended together. We can generate either RP1, methane, or the alcohol found in today's consumer items, depending on the catalyst that we choose. According to Liu, his work group has similar environmental objectives. He explains, we want the electrolyzer to convert CO2 to ethanol at the greatest purity possible while using the least amount of power and leaving the smallest footprint possible. Using less power, regardless of the source, is a net gain for the environment. However, it's simple to understand how a small, very efficient electrolyzer may be useful in space. For example, Air Company has also contributed to the industry's goalposts being moved. It began with an existing technology known as the Sabatier reactor and developed a more effective catalyst as well as a novel procedure for using that reactor to produce the RP-1 rocket fuel mix. Furthermore, the company uses 100% of the CO2 it processes through the reactor and electrolyzer, reducing waste gas emissions. If Elon Musk is serious about returning to Mars, using CO2 catalysis to make a viable rocket fuel is a good use case in and of itself. Given the weight and other constraints of the long, laborious voyage home, the first astronauts to visit Mars may need to rely on this technology, especially if Musk's goal of a long-term Mars settlement is to be realized. Sheehan adds that if our CO2-based rocket fuel was employed in a rocket launch, we would avoid 715 tons of CO2 being discharged into the environment. 
He has also written a paper about how Air Company's technology may operate in the CO2-rich atmosphere of Mars. Sheehan particularly mentions that the environmental constraints on Mars might aid in dragging Earth's CO2 behaviors forward in a cleaner, more sustainable future in that study. Now that may happen especially given Musk's involvement. This notion is not based on thin air, no pun intended, but rather on recent technological advancements, Lou says. He also mentions that the technology might allow long-distance space explorers to recycle their own CO2 in real time. He explains that it takes around seven months to go from Earth to Mars. Imagine how much CO2 is created along the route of a human expedition. Carbon capture systems are one way that governments are striving to offset carbon emissions. For example, one approach to absorbing carbon dioxide is to plant trees. However, equipment is being developed and is even operational to extract carbon on a larger scale, such as a carbon capture plant in Iceland. Now, if this video sounds interesting, then make sure to like and subscribe to this channel and keep watching. The Orca plant, which began its operations in September, employs direct air capture technology and is intended to remove 4,000 tons of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere each year. Filters in the plant's giant fans catch carbon from the air and store it underground in basalt rock, where it may be mineralized. Now, it is unclear how SpaceX plans to collect carbon and convert it to rocket fuel. There are scientific procedures that may be utilized to make liquid fuel, such as the one employed by Canadian business Carbon Engineering, which uses carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and then combines it with hydrogen from water. NASA has also devised a method for converting CO2 into gasoline that uses metal oxide thin film devices to transform the gas into fuel before it is released into the atmosphere. According to the organization, the gadget may be utilized in industrial operations to convert carbon dioxide into fuels like methane. It's especially relevant to SpaceX's operations since its workhorse Falcon 9 rocket releases a lot of CO2 during launch. And it's not as far-fetched as it may appear. According to Bloomberg, SpaceX may suck thousands of tons of carbon dioxide into a fuel source using a new process dubbed direct air capture. The world's largest DAC plant, which can absorb up to 4,400 tons of CO2 per year, just began operations in Iceland. The revelation follows Musk's announcement earlier this year of a $100 million prize for the development of carbon removal devices. The objective is to remove 1,000 tons of CO2 from the atmosphere each year, with the intention of greatly expanding the operation in the future. Musk said in April, I think it was one of those situations where figuring out the appropriate answer is going to take some time, and in particular to determine what the optimal economics for CO2 removal are. To what extent do you think Elon Musk's plan will be successful in the near future? We would love to see your comments below. Don't forget to smash, like, share, and subscribe buttons just below this video. And that is all for today's video, so we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, peace.